to Wake Up Missoula. I am your host, Scott Ramp. I'm here to tell you about the ins and outs are happening here in the city of Missoula and beyond. It's time for Wake Up Missoula. Uh, I did want to mention that it is first Friday in June, and I'm going to tell you all the first Friday events that are happening, including a special video from uh, Arts in the Moment from the Missoula Art Museum and MCAT's collaboration. So I'll have that a little bit later, but let's kick off with a little bit of news. Amazon, the company, has decided to stop testing folks for, for marijuana and decided to do a whole 180 in, in promoting the legalization on the federal level for marijuana. Think about that for a second. Uh, moving on, big news in Montana, as over 50 horses were seized uh, just this week, uh, the Lewis and Clark County Sheriff's Office uh, seized uh, 58 horses Tuesday from a North Helena Valley ranch where it is believed that they were being neglected. Short, uh, this story is by uh, Nolan uh, Lister, who goes into more detail, and there's also photos. I don't want to show the photos because a lot of the horses look malnourished. Definitely uh, part of the neglect. So what they're doing is they brought in some vets to check on the horses to make sure that they are healthy, deworming some of them. Concerns from neighbors and local ranch hands lent their services with the 15 uh, of enforcement officials, including deputies, a U.S. Uh, Forest Service ranger, and a, and a Department of Livestock employee where were on the scene to round up the horses. They relocated the horses to the Lewis and Clark Fa County Fairgrounds. The person not named involved with neglect will could, could face up to a $1,000 fine uh, and one year in a prison per conviction of neglect. Uh, up next, Mike Dennison with MTM um, had an article in the Missoula Current, and it was more uh, elaborating on more lawsuits that are being filed towards the uh, Montana uh, state legislature. Uh, I mentioned this last week that the Board of Regents, the school system, uh, um, who would, the school system in which controls the university system in the state of Montana decided to put up a lawsuit which involved uh, three of the major bills which involved uh, concealed carry arms on, uh, and also uh, loosening some restrictions on guns on uh, school grounds. Um, also, transgender in sports is a big thing as well. And then also the last one was the advocate, advocate groups that, would, that promotes uh, registration for voting on campus, which would affect... Uh, organizations such as Montperg. All right, so uh, this one in particular is looking more towards voter, uh, voter registration, which was Senate Bill 319. They impacted the local campus groups in Missoula, especially Montperg. Part of the issue was the fact that the this was passed near the end of the legislation session with little to no comment. District Court in Helena asked that the entire bill be voided as unconstitutional. This brings uh, the current uh, lawsuits against the state legislation to 10 lawsuits that are under scrutiny and lawsuits. On top of all that, a judge uh, amongst, uh, amongst these lawsuits of some of these bills is that a judge may be required to step down on certain cases because of some of these new bills. Uh, of course, I'm not surprised for this uh, happening because over the last 16 years, a lot of controversial bills uh, were vetoed by Governor Schweitzer and uh, Governor Bullock, former governor. And, and so far, it seems like the sessions have become uh, too nationalized. And a lot of times, it doesn't really reflect a lot of Montana values as it does with the national um, stage. Um, and of course, I always believe that uh, we should uh, leave the land better than we found it, and that this should also include legislation. Let's try to do better and stop poisoning the pool of discord and debate. Uh, and up next, we have a fun sprite animation video that I made, uh, and it's called Battle of the 80s. Stay, and when I come back, we're going to talk about some pre-critic. Thank you. 
Hey guys, welcome back. We're talking about movies uh, that you may just want to pass on. It's time for Pre Craig, where I prejudge a movie based on absolutely nothing. Up next, we got from a long winded series of spiritual grifters comes The Conjuring 3 The Devil Made Me Do It. We join our least favorite power couple as they disband all belief to help a young man prove he was possessed and did not kill uh, some people. Uh, so the story kind of starts out with him being like, I don't, I don't remember killing these people. I think I did something bad. And he did. And now these people come in and be like, wait a minute. He's, he was possessed. You can't just blah, 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 blah. And they're just like, okay, you know, he, it was his hand and it was somebody else controlling it. That doesn't really fly well in the, in the legal justice system. So I'm assuming they're going to be, assist, they're going to try to suspend certain amount of belief as they get deeper into the lore of spirituality and get less into the actuality. So enjoy another movie in which, uh, Ghosts are real, demons are real, and angels can save us all. Um, and I had to do that. <laughs> now, if only we can see uh, Patrick Wilson take wing. Oh, well, we did. Uh, <laughs> Spirit Untamed. This next movie, watch as we have a poor CGI film made by some people who worked hard, mind you. Um, but overall, expect a cute children's movie with a horse who is wild and refuses to be broken. He meets a very similar... Uh, unbroken girl who is forced into a situation where she must escape with a little help from this horse. But uh, along the way, they learn lessons about uh, teamwork and learning to love one another without forcing each other to do something that they either of them don't want to do. It's all about consent, people. Uh, the horse will live free, but let the girl ride for them in exchange for her soul based on a true story. Probably not. Open country. Up neck. Oh, actually, wait. Let's uh, like say reverse. This movie actually is coming, well, actually, I don't even know if it's a show, but it's coming out on Netflix. It's called Sweet Tooth. It blends the human-animal hybrid genre and kind of flips it around, and things happen. I'm assuming the whole, this show is called Sweet Tooth. Here's the poster. Sweet Tooth is uh, about a little kid who has antlers, and I guess he's special, and so the kind of the premise of the, the show or movie or whatever is that he has to navigate the world being special, being gaslit by uh, different forces who want to use him for good, evil, and everything in between. You, you, stop me if you heard this before, but you can't because this is pre-recorded and this is going to keep going on. So Sweet Tooth is coming out this week, uh, or I think it just came out today. So you guys can completely avoid that because I'm pretty sure you're just going to get a bunch of furries just being like, this is the greatest show ever. Up next, we got Open Country. It is a video game. It is a survival video game, mind you, so it's very limited and just like, here, you're in a forest, you're in open country, and, uh, you know, it, the whole premise of the plot is like, get out of the city, go out into the forest, enjoy some fun times with that, but even though you're just playing a video game, you're just basically going from a part of the city to another part of the city where you live, and you're going to be playing a, a game about being outdoors, and uh, which punishes you for being outdoors. Uh, which most likely uh, they have to make it more interesting so it becomes a more of a survival kind of horror with bears, tigers, lions, oh my, uh, and then just all sorts of weird fun stuff. But anyways, that kind of concludes the things that are coming out this week. And if you uh, are interested, I have a video for you guys. It's from a 1960 movie called Adam Age Vampire. And when I come back, I'm going to talk about some city council, which didn't meet, but I still did something for it. Stay with me. Oh man, I don't know about this science stuff. I majored in liberal arts. All that grant money, and what did I get? Lights, all sorts of like gizmos and stuff. I don't even know what I'm doing. This is stupid. This is doctor, ridiculous. Doctor. I just can't do this. You can't just give up now. We just started. This whole lab was built from the grant money. Oh man, I wish I could just go to bed and stay there forever. Well, maybe we can be like those what, underdogs. What? Will we fake it? And then that's it. We can fake it. We can just pretend that our science is working, and then they would just have to peer review it, and then maybe make their own discoveries on their own, and maybe this could actually mean real science. I am here to do real science. You have to- Have to what? Will you stop interrupting me? I'm trying to help you, and you're not really helping me, so I can't help you unless you learn to let me help you. If you leave now, your reputation will be ruined. I will not stay here on the sinking ship. Ah, oh, jeez, no wait, come back. Listen. I should probably let someone else handle that. Ah, you come back here, okay? You're tearing me apart! Where'd you go? That's not cool. Science is cool, and you're not a scientist, so therefore, you're not cool. Hmm, would you say that's a hypothesis, or a- It's a conclusion, solely based Jump on the science. evidence. Jump science! What did I say about interrupting me? Science off! 
You can't just turn off your scientist brain. You need to help me. And that way you can learn to help yourself. Do I make myself clear? We're in this together. Oh. Yeah, that's right. Those wheels are turning in your brain. You're starting to realize that you need me. Even I can fake my way through a grant. I can also fake my way through some science. And you just put some word and legal jargon in there and you can do it. I just know you can do it. You, I trust you. I believe in you. You are very pretty, by the way. I know this is an old movie, but you can't just treat me like that. This letter says I'm going to report you to the science board. Oh, dear. Um. Well, then. I guess you have no choice, then. You're going to do what you're going to do. And I'm going to do what I'm going to do. You're not going to kill me, what? right? No, of course not. I'm a cool guy. I'm really cool. I'm not like that. I'm not, like, I'm not hot. Get out of here. Oh, yeah, sorry I pushed you, by the way, but, you know, the circumstances got me hot. You know, it's nothing personal, but I just need as much help as I can get. My wall is against the back, or the back, I'm, my back's against the wall. You understand how the saying goes. Well, not the way you say uh, it. Oh, man. Ooh. Hmm. <laughs> I got an idea. If I gave you mouth to mouth, uh -huh. oh. would you consider this science? Dr. Love is here for your checkup. Hey guys, welcome back. We're talking about some city council. This week, uh, on Tuesday, uh, the city the city council did not meet, but the mayor and along with the uh, county commissioners of Missoula decided to have a press conference this week in which they were talking about tackling the homeless issue that is in Missoula and also a lot of, is uh, a lot of issues in terms of dealing with the ramifications of evicting folks from the Broadway Island. John Engen addresses the issue that arised from this. Uh, a call from the Missoula County County Health Department saying that human fecal material was uh, too close to the Clark Fork River, uh, conditions were unsanitary, and that we needed to do something about it. Yeah, but we did not have, we didn't have a landing zone for them. And that, and that site is closed today for those very reasons, those environmental safety reasons. We're cleaning it up. And you said the city wasn't going to do that again? We won't, we won't do that until there is a place for people to go, but in the meantime, Broadway Island is closed, and it doesn't, doesn't matter whether you're a recreationist or someone seeking shelter, um, you'll be trespassed from that property until we get it cleaned. So then with removing people without a landing site, was that a mistake? Or yes, I believe it was a mistake. In the press conference, uh, the city is figuring out ways to remove folks from the river for similar reasons that include health of the river. So, as you must have heard, you know, the health department was just like, okay, there's a lot of fecal matter here. It's not good for the river as it's flowing down the stream. We need to do something about it. So they did something about it. I originally thought that perhaps with the snow runoff and the rivers might be going high, that they want to move the people for their own safety of the potential uh, rise in water that is definitely happening with this hot weather that's going on. So Josh Slotnick with the county commissioners also spoke on Missoula's attempt to control the increasing tent villages. Imagine if you were spending all of your energy worrying about the security of your person and your stuff. You're not going to get anything else done. You see people without houses pushing their belongings along. They have to carry them with them because if they don't, someone will pilfer the little they have. People who are stuck in this situation are making a mess and they can't improve their lives. We found by setting up the TSOS last fall that people who have a modicum of shelter, enough so safety and security and services so they don't have to spend all of their mental energy worrying about the security of their person and their stuff, then they can move themselves forward. They can get IDs, they can get jobs, they can seek the services that we have aplenty, but you can't get those services if you're living off the grid. You know, in the way of Missoula, uh, and other, in conjunction with other organizations and spiritual uh, groups here in uh, the city of Missoula, uh, uh, came together and created a temporary safe outdoor space. And this was to deter and find a place for people to still be able to camp if they can't go to 
say, the Pavarella Center and uh, other shelters that would be available to them. Um, so they're kind of stuck outside. And so rather than getting rid of getting taking them out of the place that they are currently in, they're inviting them to a place in which would be good for them. So Josh Lotnick talks about the costs associated with not doing anything. And yes, we're going to spend some money to do this. That should knock people back. We can't possibly spend any money. Well, we are already spending money. We are already paying a cost. When you drive by the Reserve Street in Cabin and you see it and you feel offended because it's a stain on our soul that our brothers and sisters live this way, or maybe you're just pissed because you hate looking at it, that's a cost we're paying. And when those folks use the emergency room like a doctor and they use emergency services, whenever they have a problem, that's also a cost. So we're gonna go forward, we're gonna use initially some ARPA money and take advantage of what we've learned, that when we provide people safe, secure shelter with a modicum of services, they don't make a mess, and they actually improve their lives. And if we can do this right now, the problem is still small enough, I believe we can get a handle on it, we won't ever look like Seattle. But anybody who's visited recently, that is intolerable, and it's almost unimaginable. If 10 years ago you saw a picture of Seattle now, you wouldn't believe it. How could that happen? It's because nobody did what we are about to try and do now. And as the mayor said and Dave said, it's going to be imperfect. People are going to be pissed. And it's going to kind of work. A couple years ago, Michael Moore, not the film director, uh, but he was with Project uh, Community Connect, otherwise known as Project Homeless Connect from back in the day, said that the city would save more money housing folks than paying for the cost of services that should be going to emerging that cannot be prevented. So part of this is imagine you have somebody who is out in the cold, they go through hypothermia, and then they have to get rushed to the hospital. That could have completely been avoided if we housed that person. So a lot of the services that could have been used to help people who have emergencies, we went it to, to somebody we could have easily prevented just by housing them. And that's the kind of logic they go through this uh, throughout this press conference. And Adrian Beck with the Office of Emergency Management talks with the difficulty with providing new TSOS sites for folks. Um, just to reiterate that it may not be one thing. It may be a, a suite of things that, that we can deploy and that we can stand up so that we have those options or those alternatives to present to people who are illegally camping um, and they can maybe choose amongst a suite of options. There were better funding mechanisms in the past, but John Engen talks about how local communities across the nation uh, across the nation are pretty much on their own. Add that we're working with the system we got, and it ain't great. Um, government's been in the process of being dismantled for decades now, um, and some of this work used to happen uh, at the state and federal level. It's not happening anymore. So here we are trying to solve it, much as we're trying to solve so many other challenges in our communities because uh, states and the feds have abdicated that responsibility. Now, so far, the city has been working towards solutions, which include affordable housing to many levels, but also creating the Community Housing Trust, which would sustain housing. So if you are in risk of losing an eviction, you can go through the Community Housing Trust, in which they can keep you afloat just long enough to avoid eviction. So you can learn more about that online as well. But up next, we're going to talk about admin and finance as they bring up a better plan to implement in terms of figuring out a streamlined way to work with developers. So here's Aaron We've outlined on this slide what we um, hope to achieve, what we think we can achieve with additional capacity process and, and process improvements in the next 12 months, um, leading into this broader based code reform. Our short term outcomes within the next six months are to achieve a reduction in time um, across the board in our building permit reviews or single dwelling units or homes in duplexes, we wanna decrease that review time from 10 to 12 weeks to two to four weeks. Um, I think Missoula has grown beyond the, the um, ability to process a building permit in three or four days as we may have been able to in the past. We're just a larger community with a different level of development activity, but we do feel strongly we can get back to a baseline of two to four weeks. The proposed development of the scheduled amendment will increase cost recovery for development review activities, allowing us to increase 
internal capacity without relying on the general fund. Uh, and so in layman terms, th th there are three types. They want to have a short, medium, and long process. Long processes for bigger projects, short processes for already streamlined process like townhouse exemption development. Um, medium for a bigger kind of maybe like a uh, I believe it's like eight to like 16 units complex and whatnot so they're trying to figure out ways to uh, help streamline the process and hire more city staff to be able to do this and present it to the community in um, government terms um, Aaron explains that stronger ties with the development community can only serve to help the Missoula housing issues um, we need to work alongside the development community to create a fair and clear process to define what would be a substantially incomplete or deficient application. Um, we're, we're not talking about four or five things that didn't get caught. You know, we're talking about the bulk of the application um, doesn't provide the information that we need to adequately review the project. But we know we have some work to do on those checklists and on our process flowcharts to make sure we're being very clear about the information that we're asking for and requesting up front so that um, assessing a resubmittal fee is again a, a clear, fair and transparent process. And so we would not institute these fees until we um, work alongside the development community to define that. Dale Bickle, Chief Administrative Officer, talks about increases in fees associated with this new approach. We're looking to update that, but, but I think what's important is that um, we, we wanna make, um, have council make very intentional recommendations about the level of, you know, for example, the level of subsidy of development permits in development services. And I think, um, you, you, you know, we wanna make, we want to make sure that's a measurable outcome that we want to report every year and have council make sure that we are keeping pace to that goal rather than just an inflationary increase. So I wanted to just throw that out there. So far, the majority of the problems don't have to do with zoning and codes within the city, but to improve the process, the permitting process, and working with development to uh, have adjustments and readjustments based on past reviews and future projects with a new city plan in place, mind you. The Title 20 did pass a couple years ago, but it's uh, it emphasizes growth inward, and they're trying to figure out ways to increase affordable housing uh, and f uh, figuring out better ways to work with uh, development by also doing so. Thus ends my coverage of the admin and finance committee meeting. This was the only committee meeting that kind of happened within the city's purview of their city council uh, regular meetings. And they will be back this Monday to talk more about this and other things uh, as well. But if you want to learn more about agendas, webcasts, and minutes, you can go to ci.missoula.mt.us or you can go to mcat.org where we stream it on our channel on 189 and 190. Of course, here's a taste of art in the moment. Uh, this is by me. I, I edited and shot this, and I was been working with the Missoula Art Museum's um, um, Art in the Moment program, and this is featuring the artist Sean Chandler. Gathering up myself is probably the toughest task to begin the process of creating some kind of work. Not out of laziness, but to know that I am about to express some feeling or experience that I've kept inside in order to hide from others is the task that I tend to procrastinate. These experiences aren't necessarily horrible or negative things, but they're just things, good and bad, that a bashful, quiet person doesn't outwardly show every day. Once in the mode to create, I like to just let the artwork take me where I'm supposed to go. Sure, I have some composition in mind as a base. I think of my father's art teaching and my own little experiences and how they relate to the overall piece. I try not to get too committed to a certain part of the painting as I don't want, to, as I don't want that in control. If something looks pleasing or too pleasing, I try not to fear painting over or altering the image. Ironically, very often parts that seem to be the best expressions turn out to be better by covering them up. Who knows, maybe that's part of covering up me layer by layer. Maybe with art, I can hide among the images of men, women, and creatures and keep myself behind the masks. Maybe it's a fear of judgment or a protection of expression, or simply being too self-conscious. 
More likely, however, it's a line formed by my own contemporary experiences in mainstream society, connected to the years endured by ancestral experiences of dehumanization, racism, and cultural genocide. I am not sure when I would or could have shown in the MAM had I not taken a short break from art. Perhaps the timing is right for whatever reason to be seen. Nonetheless, I am very excited to be involved in this process. That one day is finally here. One thing I like to put in perspective is that a few of my mentors' pieces have also shown in the MAM. To be included in an outstanding place that they've shown is truly an honor. All right, we are back. Let's talk about events. So I'm bringing back this segment from way back in the day. Um, I kind of stopped doing events because during the pandemic, it's not really, it wasn't really the time for us to really kind of go out and mingle with folks. But as we were starting to open up and change some things um, and be a little more available, I just wanted to say that there are a lot of things happening in the city and the downtown Missoula area. And here we're going to talk about the Missoula Public Library and MCAT and our grand opening, which is happening on July 14th. And this is going to be happening from 1 to 8 p.m. on that day, Wednesday, July 14th. There'll be fun activities which uh, encompass Spectrum, MCAT, uh, the UM Living Lab, and the Family's First uh, Learning Lab. Uh, and of course, library and their staff activities include stop animation from MCAT, green screen, at MCAT as well, uh, science-based activities from Spectrum. Libraries will have various activities to writing groups, reading groups, and showing off their demonstration kitchen with some live food. You might be wondering, hey, school's coming out, MCAT, we're also doing some streaming for a lot of the graduation, but what happens after graduation? So kicking things off, we're going to talk a lot about camps, and this is from 406families.org. And YMCA is having a camp. You got Zach, Zootown Arts Community Center, is doing their rock camp. It's a very popular girls' rock camp. Historic Museum at Fort Missoula is doing some camps in June and July. Learning with Meaning is a great source as well. AR Stables is doing a horse riding camp. You can look that up. And most of these are all available on 406families.org. Um, I'm kind of going to go through this. There's a lot of fun things. Hall of Sports Academy, you got Little Grizzlies, uh, football, you got Clark Fork School does similar uh, pre-K programs, Campfire, uh, Big Sky Preschool Academy, and a lot of great stuff for a lot of young kids. And then there's some older kids with uh, Mismo Gymnastics. Um, you got the Missoula Butterfly House and Insectarium, Missoula Fencing Association, Missoula Outdoor Learning Adventures, and of course, Missoula Parks and Recreation are doing so many camps. And we cannot forget Spectrum as well, because they do so many camps. They have the morning camp, they have afternoon camp, they have all-day camps, and they also utilize the University of Montana and their dormitory for providing uh, spaces for people to uh, learn and use a lot of the classrooms during the summer. It is it's great. But I'm going to stop there, because I skipped over so many possibilities of summer camps. But 406families.org are a great source for looking up summer camps. Let's see. And of course, we must not forget, we still have openings in our own MCAT summer camp. It is an, a stop animation camp where we play with Legos, Play-Doh, all sorts of fun uh, inanimate objects and bring them to life. We do some live action fun. Basically, could it all encompassing experience for kids in the visual medium that is television um, and more. Uh, but you can uh, sign up at MCAT.org and we're doing it from August 2nd through the 6th. All other camps are full and these are day camps from 1 to 5. Let's see. Oh yeah, we must talk about Out to Lunch. Yes, last year it was completely canceled because of the pandemic, but this year they're bringing back Out to Lunch every Wednesday from 11 to 2 p.m. Live music, food trucks, outdoor fun space for a lot of people to go and enjoy the outdoor activities. Thursday night, on the other hand, will uh, be all geared towards all that. Plus, they have some beer gardens. You need some drink tickets, and drinks are available, and it happens from 538 30 to 5 30 to 8 30 every single thursday through the summer hmm let's talk about some um art it is first friday uh we're going into june 1st and let's kick things off with some art we're kicking things off with the uh inflorescence uh by angie everdeen uh this is at the artist shop uh, small watercolor and mixed media uh flowerscapes the show runs from all of june and you can check it out during their public hours um the clay studio of missoula is doing the wood fire invitational exhibition so you guys can enjoy some art by artist uh, Ben Blackwood, as he has invited a variety of establishment, established and emergency, emerging talent in the ceramics field to take part in the 
final spring uh, wood firing, these visiting artists will uh, be all sorts be using the kiln along a kiln along, uh, alongside participants, and this will be happening uh, for your first Friday. Uh, Four Ravens. Four Ravens is uh, pleased to feature Utah Potter Matt Conlin, and his uh, pottery will be on display and for sale at the Four Ravens. Most of the art is for sale. You know, it's kind of like this kind of how art is. Uh, a lot of it's on display, but then most of it is on for sale, especially at galleries. But if it's at a museum, a lot of times they usually don't do those kind of sales unless they have an auction, which they do every February, from what I believe. Uh, but don't quote me on that. Up next, we got a pop-up show. This is from La Petite Atra, uh, the pop-up show uh, artist featuring recent wood sculptures and laser jet made by the UM. Um, Master of Fine Arts uh, graduate, Tyler Brumfield. Um, and that's going to be happening at La Petite Otra. And just so you know, all these events are happening, kicking off at 5 p.m. These are like a 5 to 8 first Friday type deal. Finally, you got Salt Mine Contemporary Artist, still afloat. Uh, Gallery 709, Montana Art and Framing. This is all about uh, the pandemic and all the artists using the pandemic, pandemic to drive them into an artist to art, and it's called Salt Mine Contemporary Artist Groups. A lot of works by Steve and Bev Glukert. You got uh, Peter Kiefer. So many artists, uh, so many prints, arts, digital, great stuff, and it'll be happening. Uh, it will kick off this Friday, June, and it will actually last for two months well until July 30th. Let's see. All right, that's just Friday, folks. Let's get let's talk a little bit about some Saturday stuff because Saturday it's all about the farmers market, and this weekend is the kickoff event for the people's market. So you can get some nicks, some knacks, some hats, some packs, some wallets, all sorts of crazy stuff, jewelry and whatnot from the people's market. It, it, it goes in conjunction with the farmers market and the Clark Fork River market, all running from eight to about one p.m. I wouldn't show up at twelve because that's usually when everything starts to wind you down. It's a good time to do some morning stuff as well. And when you're done with all that, you got the Moon Randolph Homestead, which is opening again. This is owned by the city of Missoula, us, the people. Uh, we are able to uh, go to these tours, and it happens every Saturday from 11 to 5 p.m. all the way through October, in which they will be asking folks to help them pick some apples. So public tours are available on a first-come, first-served basis. They'll be having some limitations because of COVID, but it's on the North Hill Open Trails. Uh, see the maps on the page. On, on online to find out where the Moon Randolph Homestead is. Um, baseball, we also have baseball this weekend. The Missoula Paddleheads are go doing a throwback night where they don their old Osprey uniforms because uh, from uh, 1999 to 2019, we were known as the Osprey. And so this is a nice throwback. And then again, we're doing another uh, uh, Paddlehead uh, baseball game on Sunday at 5 p.m. LBGQ uh, dating night at the Google Box. Uh, they're also doing another event at the Google Box as well on Sunday, but on Friday night, they're doing a speed dating night for LGBTQ community members, uh, and it's limited up to 40 people, so please sign up in advance. Free uh, mimosas upon entry. Please wear face masks when not drinking. Sunday, they have Gabriel Lutledge at the Giggle Box, and that's going to be at 7 p.m. on Sunday. Enjoy some uh, a comedian that has been awarded from... Uh, Seattle and Atlanta, Georgia, and yeah, now that you, now that you, ba ba ba. Okay, so that concludes my uh, all the events that are happening in the city of Missoula. Um, I just wanted to thank you guys for joining me, and if you want to learn more about MCAT, we do our orientation every Saturday at 10 p.m. It is a great opportunity for folks to learn to pick up and learn a new skill when it comes to television and media. We'll teach you how to do a little bit of everything and a whole lot of nothing, too, along the way. And it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a great community to build, and we're here at the library at five, uh, 455 Main Street. So without further ado, four-way. I'm Scott Ramph, and I hope this records. <laughs>